Hey everyone, welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Cafe Con Leche for the next hour, inviting you to get social with us online. That is, tweet us and follow us on Instagram at Bronxnet TV and like us on Facebook at Open Bronxnet Television. And of course, while you're there, follow moi on Instagram, Twitter, FB, and stories at LinkedIn at Rina Valentin. So our first guest is a Bronx native, founder and executive director of MOBI, which stands for Mobilizing Our Brothers Initiative, a series of curated social connectivity events for gay and queer people of color to see their holistic self while promoting community, wellness, and personal development. Their signature programming, a movie talks, a personal and professional development series that caters to black, gay, and of bringing community together to live stronger, longer, and healthier lives. Here to share more is movie founder and executive director and GLADS director of communities of color and media, Deshaun Usher. Hello and welcome. Hey, how are you? We are moving along I'm all <laughs> that new york is opening up and we have all these events that we are able to highlight bringing yes. in our diversity <laughs> in all colors in all shapes and forms you know yeah so, well, finally <laughs> yeah i know i know i know i know but this is some really great stuff you're working on um let, let, let's just talk about um moby as an, an organization first before we talk about the moby talks Okay, yeah, so Moby was founded in 2017, um, and it was largely out of um, the New York Blood Center, surprisingly. Um, I was working in HIV research and clinical research and behavioral research trials, um, and it was trying to figure out, like, what's that gap between research and reality and how to, like, put on programming for our community, and so after like literally writing a grant to the Department of Health, the New York City Department of Health, um, we were funded to put on the signature programming, particularly for the Black gay um, community um, to bring people together, to share resources um, and really connect them to different services and really think about like, how do we build um, our community personally and professionally. And so every year, even despite COVID, <laughs> we've been able to like grow and um, do more innovative programming. Um, the talks when COVID hit, we went to like a digital series and then that like launched- Like everyone our, else. <laughs> yeah, right, like, like everyone else. Um, and so then that had launched our like YouTube channel, um, but it did give people like a glimpse that weren't able to like attend the previous movie talks, like a destination to get a glimpse of like what a movie talks would be. And then last year for our movie talks, we actually did it in partnership with Forbes magazine, Forbes the Culture. So we did like a week long Instagram live conversation series, um, just looking at different entrepreneurs and different Black queer um, LGBTQ folks that like contributed to culture. Um, and we wanted to ensure that we were, again, thinking about how do we build and cultivate these networks of people. So in essence, it, it actually expanded throughout the COVID, right? Yeah. Which, you know, that I always say there's a, there's a silver lining to what we've all endured. And, and it's lovely to hear that at least that partnership was developed in, in spite of, right? So. Yeah. What are the, the primary topics of discussion that are shared and how many people attend these events? Well, let's talk about the virtual ones versus the in-person because we were talking about the virtual first. Yeah, so for the virtual ones, it's open to anyone that's like, um, were that either wanted to learn more about our community, um, that wanted to support our community, um, the topics and everything was like geared towards particularly like the Black LGBT community, but it also like could relate to ally communities. And so the digital series, um, each one, like the first one had focused on like sexual, like identity um, and then the third uh, the second one focused on mental health and then the third one really looked at um, identity like and what does that look like inside of the LGBTQ community across that um, and we were actually we got like a thousand of views um, of like over the course of um, like when we launched it in 2020 um, and so the first I want to say the first like year we had got a most like 50,000 like views um, across like the social like 
medium platforms where it was um, at and then like each year just sort of kind of like increased. Um, last year when we did the partnership with Forest of Culture, we still, I want to say, reached like thousands of folks that had tuned in live. Um, and then Forbes magazine ended up like running an article that did a recap <laughs> of it. So that was cool. Um, but most of our movie talks events because we tend to want them to be smaller um so we usually will like try to get at least well not at least at maximum <laughs> 150 people um and even though 150 people sound like a lot it's also um like it's still a manageable number of like the different topics that will be discussed and people still have an opportunity to connect and so i know this year for our in-person Moby Talks, we'll be looking at literally, um, we know the impacts of COVID, right? And so it's like, how do we celebrate joy? <laughs> how do we like look at alternative wellness? How do we um, look at like physical and mental and spiritual health? Um, and so those are gonna be like the core pieces of it with like dance performances also um, by a couple of folks that like are trained and like are dancers with like Alvin Ailey and um, other like parts um, in schools in New York too. So when um, when you do come back in person, right? Is it geared more towards networking and and just being in the company of people who are like minded? Uh, do you have uh, like professional speakers? Like walk me through what an event looks like in person. Yeah. So we usually will have um, like when so when people arrive, you'll usually will enter a space that will also have like community partners. Um, so who are some of these community like providers, um, service providers or vendors um, like local vendors that like are within our community that we want to highlight and support that provide various like services uh, to our community. Then we have a host um, that like will usually walk us through um, like the conversation um, and it's with the, either one individual or like a couple of folks that like will talk about a certain topic. Um, and will give their personal and professional opinions about like what that means because they're usually like close to that. Um, we do like a couple of breaks and so we usually will do at least two to three conversations like different conversations um, for folks and in between those breaks we just encourage people to network. Uh, we have our visual director who is Laquan Dawson who takes professional headshots of folks um, and so then you're able to like walk away with like these like really beautiful images um, that like won't cost you anything <laughs> that you can use um, and it's really again it's like to cultivate networking but then also give you advice and tools of what it's like to be a black queer person inside of a certain field or a certain industry um, and what is it that like you may be facing um, each each section usually will end with like a q a and so that's where it gets always interesting <laughs> because then it's like the audience gets to control like that conversation um and then we also open it up to after which is part of like why those breaks are important so that like you can also like talk to the speakers because they're usually there throughout the whole duration of the event um and they're around listening and taking it and learning um and being able to cross share like what they know too so is Moby membership driven? Like, do people have to register for this? I mean, because you did mention that you you prefer it. Well, I don't know if you prefer it, but you're su suggesting that it'd be more intimate when, when handled in person. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's free, um, but we prefer people to register. So one, we know how many folks are coming. Um, and we also know that like, over, like sometimes we'll like, allow registration to go over the 150 because we know everyone may not be able to make it like on the day of. Um, but then if you forget to register and you um, follow us on social media and you like know where the venue is and you show up, then we'll also register you on site. Um, but it's just largely so that we can prepare because we also will try to provide meals <laughs> during it and so that people like that we have enough food for folks so that people can eat um, and just fit like really just be inside of the environment and so it, that's the biggest thing but it's like 100 percent completely free um, and all we do is just ask folks to register beforehand so that we just know how many folks to expect 
So before we go, and, and this is, you know, a, a personal question for you, um, having come from this background of being GLAD's Director of Communities of Color and Media, and now founding uh, this Mobi uh, Talks and, and Networking and Community, what moved you to dedicate yourself to offering this all for free at that? So for me, I think it was just knowing the landscape of, like, when people would get funding for our community, um, like for the Black LGBT community, particularly to do health and wellness events that oftentimes like that money wouldn't go to our community. Um, and so um, usually it would just go to like staff time or, and so then it's like, well, we can't do any programming because we don't have any money. And it's like, but you got funded to do <laughs> something with that money. And so it was really like pushing back against like the system to think about like, how do we create this ecosystem that like really like shifts the way that like when we receive grant funding and that that um, resources actually makes a difference and can impact the community. And so that was the start of it, um, was just really thinking about being able to make a direct difference <laughs> into the community by being able to follow those resources into the venue, into the food, into like removing as many barriers as possible um, so that people have access to it. Um, and oftentimes I think we forget that like sometimes certain things can be an access to community. And for us to cultivate community, we just try to create these events that like are 100% paid for by someone else <laughs> because oftentimes we just want people to show up and get the information and we want people to show up and realize that there is a supportive community out there um, like for you. And again, like growing up in the Bronx, this was something that I wish I would have had, um, like, so that I would have been able to see, like, community a lot sooner, but knowing that it exists, it's beautiful, <laughs> but it's also just one of those things of that we also don't want to be, like, an exclusive organization or initiative, and we don't want it to be, like, a price um, thing that, like, would make it where someone wouldn't be able to attend those events. I love it. That That's what we call inclusivity thank yeah. you <laughs> for dedicating yourself to this and for making it your business to pass it forward um everyone uh, it's Deshaun thank you so much Deshaun again is the uh founder and executive director of Moby and um if you're interested in information on their event taking place May 14th at uh, Midtown White Loft you can visit Moby-NYC.com and on Instagram at Moby NYC. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a new play uh, that's paying homage to the queen of disco, Donna Summer. Don't go anywhere. 